Oh, hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How's hello, it going? Everyone. Long time to see. It has been a while, especially for me. I haven't. Uh... <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, hi, my name is Andy Bendit. I'm Nicole, and uh, we are your community managers. What's up? What's up? <laughs> um, um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we haven't done this in a really it's long been a time. While, uh, yeah. Being together, actually, in the same office. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just so, just to get this out of the way, we both got tested for COVID uh, just yesterday. Yep. Uh, both came back negative, so we're Yay. we feel confident and safe being in the same room together mm -hmm. for the first time in a very long time. Um, but yeah, welcome to the stream. Uh, today we're going to be going over a whole bunch of new things coming up uh, with update 2.3 for Conan Exiles. Uh, first, uh, so we're going to be joined by uh, producer Scott Jr., our lead programmer Marcin Polacek, and lead designer Dennis Dalfit. Uh, to go over improvements to consoles, as well as all the major content updates coming up in the next update. Yes. Uh, so first, we're going to be starting off with talking with Scott and Marcin, uh, and then we're going to be move, uh, moving into content updates with Dennis. And then if we have some time, we'll be taking as many questions as we can uh, from you guys. Uh, I think we left a thread on the forums. And on Reddit. And on Reddit, collected a bunch of your questions, and we'll see if we can answer. As many as we can. Uh, what we can, yeah. indeed. And also, additionally, we'll have some uh, of our community support team in chat, so they'll help with any questions um, that come up in there. So big shout out to you guys, community support. Woo! Woo! <laughs> and then, so uh, for those of you who are not able to watch this live, uh, we will have a like recording of this up on YouTube uh, as quickly as possible with like annotated bits uh, to go over each section. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, we should hopefully have also a like a stream write up by uh, Multigun by on Multigun. forums as well. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Multigun, he's amazing. Um, so without further ado, yes. uh, let's jump into the content. Um, <laughs> so first, we're going to be speaking with Marcin and Scott, switching over here really quick. All right. All right. Scott, Marcin. Hi. Hello and greetings. Hello. There he is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, taking some time out of y'all's very busy day, and it's a little little later on in the day for y'all over in Oslo. We're here in Durham, of course, so it's 11 a.m. for us, but it's like 5 p.m., I think, for you, 1700. So thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, what do we got going on? What's coming up? What have we been working on? <laughs> I think we got a lot of eager folks just, yeah. trying to, just chomping on the bit to see what's coming up. Yeah, so we have 2.3 coming out next week. Uh, that is the plan anyway. We have a, a final build and testing, so we're excited to get that out. It has what I talked about last year, which is the, the major SIPTA updates that we've been working on through Early Access. Uh, Dennis and I will be talking about that in a bit. Uh, and also exciting is we have a big console patch coming out very soon at the end of this month. So that will be the console parity patch. Uh, it will bring both consoles up to date with uh, PC. SIPTA uh, won't be there yet. That'll come a little bit later. Uh, we'll announce the dates for that sometime in the future. But this also includes a ton of optimizations, uh, crash fixes, uh, device profiles for Xbox Series S and X, uh, and, and other stuff that Marcin and I will talk about very shortly. Great. So actually, yeah, let's let's talk console updates and what's going on on the technical end. I'm going to switch switch over here to some things that Marcin sent over to show y'all. Let's see. And so yeah. Eye candy. Eye yeah, candy lots of eye candy. Uh, <laughs> Sirius X on uh, both maps, actually. So I encourage everyone to, to take a look. It looks nice. Originally, it's 4K, but uh, you know the stream quality is a bit lower. It'll look great. It looks great. So yeah, we, got, we have some eye candy rolling right now. Marcin, can you walk us through just what we've been working on for console improvements? All right, so uh, let me just introduce myself really quickly. Sure. My name is uh, Marcin, uh, Marcin Polacek. I'm originally from Poland. Right now I, uh, I'm in Norway, in a beautiful city, Oslo. Um, eight years totally in the industry, last for Funcom, uh, last two years as a lead, which is an amazing experience, uh, being able to, to, head, uh, to be ahead of, of uh, such a big project from the technical side is, is, is something amazing. I, I can recommend this to everyone. Uh, so basically my scope of responsibility was, was leading a team of coders. We were basically taking care of the whole game uh, as if it was the live living organism, uh, a small pet or a baby, um, fixing crashes, exploits, bugs, uh, taking care after, after patches if they went not good, 
uh, as well as uh, also risk assessment, uh, recruiting coders, mentoring coders, all of this together. A huge, huge ball of, of, of tasks. Uh, so let's get back to consoles. Um, as you guys mentioned, uh, yes, we've prepared, uh, as Scott mentioned also, we've prepared a, a console patch for you guys. Uh, that was a huge goal on our on our list. Uh, we are aware that uh, the, the quality of gameplay was a bit different on, on consoles. There's a bit more crashes that are related to the limited amount of memory. So that's that's one of our discussion points today. Uh, but uh, we will also focus on a few other ones like the dashboarding and then the performance gains and what's 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 on on the plate for Series S and X because there is a significant uh, quality improvement. So Scott, uh, where should we start? What do you think? Uh, so we released a patch last month, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. to fix the the major dashboarding <laughs> issue. So we can talk about that. What was causing that? Why it took so long to find? Uh, yeah, and then yeah. we can go into the rest of the optimizations. So that's an interesting story, and that'll be a little bit technical. I assume it it may be uh, interesting for for some of you guys. Um, the patch is already out. We we released, uh, uh, we cherry picked uh, the, one of the fixes and uh, released one of the patches uh, some time ago already. But I wanted to bring the history back because for us it was really amazing discovery. So there was a there was an issue. We call it the dashboarding. You guys call it also like the, the dashboard probably. But the dashboard is in general a symptom of the game that crashed. Uh, but the thing that uh, I I want to bring up here is that the dashboard that actually was crashing the game right after joining the, one of the official servers. So we had to, to, to work around this problem. You guys had to move to the single player and then go back to the main menu and then join the, the dedicated server. I can imagine that was super annoying. And um, we had a lot of troubles trying to fix it because uh, for, for some reasons. Uh, for example, uh, we were not able to reproduce it on dev kits. For those for those who don't know, a dev kit is a version of a console that is prepared for developers. Something that we can uh, make a build on our own computers and then push the build to the uh, to the console and then test it without releasing to the retail. So it's like the the testing environment for for console builds. We were not able to reproduce it uh, for quite a long time. So there was nothing to, to start the investigation from. Uh, Another point is that, uh, wait, I'm reading something about sound problems. Do we have any sound problems? I turned up the volume a little bit. Okay. For you. You, Do you sound want me fine to, speak to me. Personally, yeah, you sound fine to us. I'm turning up the volume on this. Okay. A bit. Um, what about chat? Do you guys hear me well? <clears throat> yeah. And also, like, the there will be a write up afterwards um, on okay. the forum. So um, if anybody misses anything for any reason, uh, you can read it later on all right yeah yeah after i turned it up a little bit the oh good yeah 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 chat saying that you're pretty clear now yeah thanks guys about right. that one two three check microphone check let's continue <laughs> <We're good. laughs> let's continue i think we're good uh all right so the, the second part is that um every time the game crashes we receive the report it's it's like the mechanism for every console game uh, so that we can we can run some data analysis and see what's actually broken in the in the build and then release the patch to fix it uh, for this problem, we haven't seen any reports, so that was another unknown that has to be un, uh, had to be resolved. Um, we solved this problem by automating testing. We did a lot of uh, additional software we've built, and basically an, an additional software that automated console testing. We've been leaving builds overnight uh, with eight consoles connected for two months, and finally, finally, uh, of course, with an addition of the really amazing QA uh, uh, job and, and discoveries done there. We were able to find some dependencies and then discover what was actually causing the, the problem. In the end, we found that it wasn't the crash. It was just application being terminated by the external library. Uh, it seems silly, but uh, yeah, this this happened. We, we were so happy to fix it. That's why we cherry picked the change and, and released it uh, earlier. Uh, in the end, I think we found uh, four issues that were similar, so that's uh, that was a huge story inside Funcom. Like internally, everyone was, "Yeah, it's fixed finally." Uh, we were so happy. That's that's why I'm talking about this 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 uh, <laughs> story right now because uh, I'm also happy about. It. Sure. Yeah. Well, because like you know, we 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 receive reports and like we we know something is happening, but knowing something is happening is very different from why it's happening or like the underlying yeah, actual yeah. issue. And that's never as simple as it may <laughs> seem. And of course, like with an issue like what's called dashboarding, it's a symptom of potentially a lot of different things. Potentially anything. Yeah, exactly. The game just 
stopped, crashed, terminated. You, you cannot say. Yeah, it could be you any evidence. number. You need data to, to make the assumptions and then go to colors and, hey, this has to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, it's, it's yeah, it's it, it can be a much more complicated process to resolve the symptom that players see as dashboarding, but it's never like a cut and dry kind of thing. So it does mm -hmm. involve quite a process. So yeah, that's great to hear. <laughs> uh, right. What else are we working on? What else did we, did we work that we worked on? So Scott mentioned 2.3 and 2.4. Uh, these builds are really, really important in terms of uh, uh, memory uh, consumption in general, memory and memory stress. So what we've discovered during uh, the whole series of investigations to to bring the consoles uh, to, to bring consoles uh, to the to the higher higher quality level to the to, you know higher stability level uh, we've discovered that 90 percent of our crashes out are actually out of memory so you know every time you build a huge castle every every time you place a uh, hundred placeables like carpets candles chairs this costs memory on, on the game client and uh, there is no limit so you can go as much as you can but the console have to handle it which means uh, we have to handle optimizations. And, and that's what we focused on for last, uh, I don't want to lie, but uh, more than six months. Uh, that's that's something that we worked on really hard. There is a special team that is focused on, on the memory stuff. Um, 2.3 is the, the first patch that contains significant improvements. 2.4 contains additional bunch that is uh, that brings stuff into the, into even 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 higher uh, higher quality. Um, I, also, I also wanted to put things into perspective because I mentioned some numbers and I'm wondering if you guys are aware of uh, how big the game actually is. So um, some statistics from the biggest server, uh, it's 900,000 900, building instances, it's 80,000 placeables, it's 750,000 items and 60,000 inventories. So that's already a huge database. Um, 7,000 player accounts, 900 guilds that that have been registered on that server. So after the server starts, it takes 22 gigabytes of RAM. So that's that's a big <laughs> machine to Yikes. to handle the server. Yeah. So now you can you should imagine that you are joining the server, and the subset of all of this data is being replicated to your client. Your client has to handle this. Uh, that's where trouble comes from, because the game scales into in, into the infinity. Basically, you can dig uh, as much as you can, but the console, uh, PS4 or, or Xbox One, it will still have 80 gigs of RAM. Actually, the game has 5.5 because the rest is uh, reserved for the system. So it's only 5.5 gigs to, to handle all of this or just the subset that, that you're seeing that you're around your proximity. Um, so that was long and slow grinding process that uh, brings a lot of improvements. Um, there are three categories that where we are, where we are focused uh, and we were, we were focused in, in the past also. So on the engine side, um, you can improve many systems. There are there are object pools for for your object. Your object is a special object type used by by the Unreal Engine, so that's the the, the engine feature. And uh, these pools were basically too big. We shrink them down. Uh, we don't need so many. This gave us uh, a saving of about 100 140 megabytes for a console. That's a lot. Uh, if someone is a C plus plus programmer, uh, you will be aware of the memory alignment problems. Uh, if someone is a UE4 programmer, you will be aware of the amount of deprecated stuff in, in the engine that costs memory just for being there. Uh, so we removed uh, a lot of these. Uh, we removed also a lot of stuff that we don't need, like, for example, the actors are holding delegates for the touch interface. Because our Unreal Engine can be compiled and, and run on iPads, for example. Uh, that's a feature that, that we didn't need, so we removed it. So there's a lot of cutting directly from the engine, very low level, very dangerous. Uh, but well tested right now, and I think it brings brings benefits. Um, on the other hand, on the game code side, there is also a lot of improvements. Um, first thing is UI. So just opening fit window or opening the inventory and switching between between items, moving items between chests, um, navigating uh, through the fit window, and, and lear learning new recipes. These could eat uh, up to 300, 300 megabytes. This is extremely expensive. We found ways to shrink it down uh, two or three times. Uh, it is still expensive, but uh, the, the, the peak memory consumption is not that high, um, which I think it's, it's a pretty pretty nice game. 
Um, what else? Animation blueprints. Um, did you guys notice that uh, Excel's server contains 7,500 7, NPCs? Um, every NPC, every animation blueprint for every NPC costs around cost about 250 kilobytes. So if if you if you do the math, it will be a couple hundred megabytes. So we were also we were also able to to shrink this size down uh, two or three times. I don't remember exactly how much, but uh, that was significant improvement. The final fix, if I remember correctly, is in 2.4. So 2.3 doesn't contain it yet. And finally, items. Items, as I mentioned, uh, 750,000 items. That that's a huge number. Uh, so your big castles holds a lot, a lot of stuff. Um, we were able to also remove some 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 data members, move them to the static variables, fix the alignment, um, remove some text members from blueprints that were holding uh, data that could be actually treated as a static data and read it from the outside resource. So lots lots of these improvements. Um, the process will, was long and grindy. grindy. Um, so it, it, it looks like this. You save 5 max here, you save 10 max here. It's not enough. So we continue, continue. And after a few months, I, I'm pretty sure we saved about 400 to 600 megabytes uh, on the client side, depending on the, on the situation, which translates to the improvement of the stability uh, as I mentioned, we've automated the testing process, so we were able to leave the a cloud of Xboxes overnight and get back the next day and, and see, okay, the average session length was this amount of hours. We improved it uh, three to four times, depending on the scenario, depending how how much uh, stress our testing scripts put on the game. So how much do you move on the, between the inventories? How much do you teleport between huge castles? How much do you navigate between feats in your, in your uh, character view? Um, so that's uh, that's how we look like with the memory improvements. Can't wait 2.4 to go out live. Yeah, so it sounds Sorry like yeah, like <laughs> even though like even though we're like we're doing small like you know obviously we've made like some huge gains in some areas, but like a lot of like small improvements in a lot of areas that adds up to a whole lot of savings, right? And ultimately that will translate to just better performance and better stability. So yeah, so the, the, the yeah. Time. Yeah, and, and without a memory, it's it's so important to cut as much as possible just because it's it's a sandbox game. We don't have a lot of controls over what the players will actually build, right? The content that they generate in the game. So uh, getting as far away from the threshold as possible before a crash happens is incredibly important. Yeah, because we yeah, as mentioned, there is a lot going on in some servers, and we've seen some big builds. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, anything, anything to facilitate that better is a win in my book. Hopefully, We're actually using those databases to test. Um, oh, really? Uh -huh. Yeah, there are databases that have, that have 800 megabytes of, of size, and uh, that's the stats from. I, I actually took these stats today from one of the biggest servers for uh, for Excellence, and oh, we wow. will use this database uh, in next week for testing. So uh, th that's how we measure what's, what's out. What? <laughs> Thanks for helping us. <laughs> Thanks for <laughs> Thank helping you, us optimize the game, guys. Appreciate it. Build more, have fun. <laughs> yeah, keep building more things. More, please. <laughs> well, that's great. Yeah, thank you for thank you for the technical overview of what we've mm -hmm. been working on uh, for the for the uh, next updates. Um, is there anything else we wanted to go over really quick before we jump into any like content stuff, Scott? Uh, I saw some people asking for the console date. Uh, we can't give that. We're we're in certification right now, so as soon as that passes, we'll be able to uh, to give the exact date. Since we're enabling the device profiles for Series X and Series S, uh, we had to pass full cert, so it, it takes longer than normal. Uh, yeah. But we will hopefully have some updates uh, you know, next week sometime, maybe late next week. So That's soon, exciting. very soon. Yeah. Since we're very in the certification, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Since we're in the yeah, certification it, process, it's like soon. a matter of like weeks and not like months or something like that. Right, yeah, the, the 2.3 patch will go out on consoles Hope by the end of the month is is what we are aiming for right now. Cool. Me? Great. <clears throat> <laughs> Looks like a lot of people are excited. Yeah. Great. Hooray! All right. Well, great. Yeah, and so and then uh, just for a point of reference, also all the footage that y'all are seeing on the screen right now, I believe was taken from a Series X. Is that correct, Marcel? Yes. Yes. Cool. This is this is Series X. I let myself to be a content creator for for a short bit of time a few days ago, Aww. and I recorded some <laughs> videos. Yeah, I was like, uh, I need clips. It was, was like, really fun. 
there's a few additional words I can say about uh, the performance overall, because uh, performance and memories are two different topics. Um, we are also working on the GPU performance and uh, the overall frames per second, uh, which is the, the indicator of the performance. So the, the difficulty with Excels is that the Excel lens contains of 12 different biomes. Every biome has a different amount of grass, uh, post-process, trees, water, um, shadows also can work differently because there is the, the, the geometry is different. Uh, SIPTA contains, if I remember correctly, six biomes, and uh, that's basically the same differences. Grass here, not here. Uh, some post-process here and here not. Um, and this is extremely difficult to balance because on the on the other axis of this whole problem, you have different types of consoles, PS4, uh, Xbox One, Xbox One S, One X, Series S, PS5, Series X, lots of different hardware. Um, so what we're doing right now is uh, we're trying to, of course, improve the performance. So there is um, a lot of work done by the art team, uh, which contains optimizing materials, uh, making the shader complexity much better. Uh, decreasing the poly count, uh, shrinking the textures, so that uh, you know all of this still looks fine, but uh, performs much better. Um, so on, on one end, we, we try to to uh, decrease how much have to be calculated every frame. On the other hand, we try to approach the problem from the different angle. Uh, what if a player doesn't care about the, the visual quality and uh, the player wants only the performance? So something that we came up with is uh, performance preset. It's basically uh, two modes for a console that uh, you guys will be able to switch in the UI, in the, in, the, in the visual settings, quality and performance. In quality mode, we will the game will prioritize uh, the visual quali quality over the frame rate. In the performance mode, the frame rate will be at the first place. So you, the console, for example, Series S will work in 60 frames per second. Uh, in comparison to the, to the quality mode, it will be only 30 frames per second, but the quality will be much higher. Mm. So you will be able to choose. This will also scale much better in terms of uh, big buildings, because that's another another um, another variable in the whole equation, right? Uh, we can tune the game for to to work well in the base map, but then someone digs a huge castle and it's uh, actually a few milliseconds or twenty milliseconds more, and how to handle this? So we'll try to also add some adaptive systems to to maybe. Uh, tweak the resolution a bit down or tweak the quality a bit down, but still maintain the frame rate. Uh, so so that's what we are also working right now. And uh, the final version will be in, in 2.4. That's it on performance. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That was very comprehensive. I'm not a super technical person myself personally, so <clears throat> I understand some of these words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a silly dumb. The game will look manager. better and nice. <laughs> it'll run better and it'll look better. That's the, yeah, that's yeah, the it's already amazing. It's for, already amazing, I have to say. Yeah. A layman like me. Yeah. Well, thank you, Marcin. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank good you. info. All right. Great. Um, so yeah, that's the technical overview of what's coming up uh, in terms of like console performance uh, in, the, in, the coming, in the coming updates. Uh, and then next up, we're going to be uh, speaking with uh, Scott and Dennis about the, the, the content, the meat what's what's happening gameplay wise uh, in the uh, next update. So I'm going to be switching over windows in just a second. Marcin, thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. Bye Take bye. Time out Thanks, Marcin. Thanks, no Marcin. Have school. an awesome weekend. <laughs> bye. Yeah, happy Friday. All right. So switching over to this really quick. Boop. And then let's see here. Uh, just going to do a couple quick edits and then we will <laughs> Boop, and then, okay, yeah, that should be good. Okay. I just saw Dennis throw out his dog. <laughs> Did we? Bring oh. pet back in room. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the baby, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have Dennis and Scott coming up next. Uh, here we go, boop. Hello. Hey guys. Hi. Hey Dennis. Sorry, I didn't mean that you threw your dog out just now. <laughs> just like, yeah, just back. No, no, just ushered, ushered them back out. Sorry. I saw some people yeah, being like, he's, what? He's going to scratch at my door and try and jump in my lap the whole time. So he has to go. That's a problem. Cool. Yeah. Well, Dennis, thank you for joining us. Uh, can you can you tell us a little bit about yourself first before we jump into yeah, the content? Yeah, who you with? <laughs> sure. Um, so I am the lead designer for Conan Exiles. I've been a lean designer on the project since uh, I believe June 
of last year. And I've been working at Funcom for uh, since 2008, <laughs> yeah. I think. Yeah, it's been a very long time. So, uh, I, you know, I uh, I was on the last dev stream and I've been really happy working on Exiles. It's a, it's a game that I love to work on and I'm happy to be here to talk about it with you guys. Sweet. And there's a lot to go over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so this has been, so let's see, yeah, so the upcoming update 2.3 has been on Test Live for a little while now. Uh, we've had a lot of really awesome feedback uh, in terms of both like gameplay and bug fixes, uh, but we're going to be going over, for those of you who haven't had a chance to check out Test Live or haven't heard anything about it, we're just going to be going over like pretty much everything that's going to be changing and improving with the patch. So uh, Yeah, we buckle up. We patched today, so you can, you can go test it now. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we released uh, another another version on Test Live just today, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Great. Well, hey, Dennis. Uh, what are we changing? What are we doing? Well, um, we're basically doing a big overhaul of the core systems for the Isle of Sipta. So, uh, whenever we released Isle of Sipta, we got a lot of feedback immediately that told us that we made a DLC that didn't resonate with our core audience. We decided it was in everyone's best interest to identify what our audience didn't like about Sipta and what they do like about the Exiled Lands and try to inject some of that DNA from the Exiled Lands into Sipta. So if you look at the Isle of Sipta producers letter, you can see there's a percentage breakdown of um, all the lead, everything that led to a negative review on Steam. And we use that data to help influence our changes for Sipta. Excellent. Good. And I think well, I think people will be very happy to oh, 100%. hear yeah. that, yeah. Um. <laughs> So yeah, I guess we can go into like what the what changes we did make. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, what do we do at all? Yeah, uh, the, one of the biggest things that we identified as an issue for our player base was the overarching gameplay loop in Sipta. So we decided that instead of destroying that loop entirely, we could take all of the parts of it and relate them to activities that you can do in the Exile Lands. So as we talk through the stream, we'll discuss each of those features specifically. Um, Equally disliked on that producer's letter breakdown was the availability of thralls, and many people felt the map was too small and empty, there was nothing to do in it. So now we've added NPC camps to the island, and there are a bunch of activities to do within the NPC camps that we've added. Um, you can do things like rescue thralls from the inhabitants of the camps. There's floating loot crates, weapons to pick up, grave digging, uh, unique companions that you can't get in Exiled Lands, rare bosses with rare loot, hidden areas, and a bunch of lore, uh, just to name some of the stuff that's in there. And we also added the Purge to Sipto, which wasn't previously... Mm -hmm. uh, it was disabled before. So we decided to take that activity that we know some people like from Exiled Lands and add that back into Sipto as well. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be going over like uh, I think ten like ten major points, talking about like the new camps, yep. uh, companion rescue, revamps to vaults, purges, changes of the surge, uh, <laughs> the, the the tower interior, <laughs> uh, some new loot, uh, and other miscellaneous like system changes. So first, I think we wanted to start off with the big one, which is the new points of interest in camps. Is that right? Yeah. So like I mentioned before, we added several new NPC camps to the aisle. And I think you guys might have a graphic queued up for me yes. uh, to show yep. that as a result of adding these new camps, we've had to add building blockers in a lot of places where the camps are on the map. So we made this map for you guys specifically to take a look at and see if your base is currently in an area where a new camp will be. So whenever the update comes out or beforehand we'll we'll warn you beforehand you have the time to move your base um so anywhere that's marked red on this map is where a new camp is added and it's it's relatively accurate so if you zoom in really close you should be able to tell pretty much exactly where buildings will be blocked on that note we have another system built in as well and the system is there to destroy buildings that are in the new blocked areas. So by default, anyone that runs a private server, this will be disabled for you. 
on official servers, we will enable it whenever we patch 2.3. But if you run a private server, you're worried about losing your base to one of these new POIs. It won't be destroyed. You have to actually take the step to do it yourself. Good. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the the reason we had to do this is the if you have a building on top of it, you would you'd block content from other players uh, or have stuff spawn inside of your base, uh, which you, which you probably don't want. Yeah, for the most part, if there is a building that's too close to a spawn point for any NPC, that NPC won't spawn. So we had to put blockers here to make sure the content isn't blocked for other players. Did uh, Do you have like a, a favorite new one? <laughs> yeah, um, there is one set of camps, and I won't say their names just to avoid the, the spoiler Spoilers, factor at all. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's one where there's basically a band of pirates next to a camp of undead pirates. And they okay. will actually, it's like the the undead pirates either drove out the humans or the humans are trying to retake their sunken ship. And they will just clash with each other uh, in between those two points. And That's great. I feel it's really cool. You don't see a lot of like dynamic interaction between communities a lot, like different groups of monsters and exiles. So that one stood out to me as being pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, kind of on that, like talking about communities, also uh, like like mod, like creature families, enemy families. I guess if we have, can we go into like I think we're introducing some new f enemy factions or something like that to Sipta, right? Yeah. Um, so there's three new factions, and they'll be placed out different in different spots on the map. Um, there's the Stygian mercenaries. They're led by a guy called Craxus the Bastard, who is a basically a bastard of the. Uh, the Stygian throne, you know, the, the the king of Stygia, and bastards in Hyborian times could earn the right to inherit the throne by like conquering and stealing and you know basically doing things in the name of their their mm. um, country. So Craxus is here on Sipta to, to try to retake it and retake its sorceress power for in the name of Stygia, so he has a better chance of inheriting the throne. Um. Then there's a pirate band called the Black Corsairs. And you, the Black Corsairs, you may be familiar with, um, they are um, just a group of pirates that basically roam along the, the southern coast of Hyboria and just steal and, and generally be pirates. <laughs> steal, <laughs> kill, plunder. you know, exactly, loot and plunder. And the Black Corsairs were blockaded by the Stygian mercenaries whenever Craxus came to retake the island. Mm -hmm. And they don't like people trying to tell them they can't go somewhere. So they have also invaded the island with the intent of, of wiping out the Stygian mercenaries that have appeared. And the third faction is called the Accursed. And the Accursed are basically those who have been torn out of time and space through one of the portals that summons people to the island. And on their journey, their minds were like corrupted by the the blackness of the other side mm. and they've gone completely insane and now they actually work alongside the monsters that you would otherwise find in the maelstrom and they they too are just you know claiming the island in their own name awesome and here's like there's a the video yeah, yeah. Here. so yeah so here's a quick look of uh like some of the new camps yeah. that we're introducing to the game as well uh, so you can see, like, if, you, if you're familiar with some of the places before uh, the upcoming update, uh, you may notice that there's some new inhabitants, some new buildings, uh, new, new, all sorts of new stuff, uh, and new enemies to deal with, and potentially new, uh, new loot, new enemies <laughs> to uh, add to your, uh, your, your, your thrall. Uh, what's the word? What am I looking for here? I'm having a brain fart right now. Your, your, your followers. Yeah. Oh, just followers. Your followers, your, your posse. Your retinue. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of on that note, also talking about like companions and thralls, I think we also have, we're introducing like part of a new system, like a new mechanic to acquire new uh, people to your, uh, to your, under your fold, right? Yeah. We're adding a system that we call the uh, thrall rescue system. And Basically, while you're exploring camps, you might encounter a jailer in that camp. And if you kill the jailer, he'll drop a key. 
you can use the key to open a cage that has an exiled thrall inside. And when you open the cage, the thrall will come out, owe a life debt to you, and basically follow you around killing things in your name. So it's kind of just a, an accessible, kind of interesting way to explore and find thralls uh, that'll come around and you know, follow you around and fight for you. That's great, and that's I think um, uh, it's kind of a kind of a neat like thematic difference. Also, uh, gives you a different option to acquire new followers uh, in a way that kind of like indebts them to you, and like you're rescuing them, you're helping them out, and they're helping you out in yep. return. Um, yeah, this, yeah. This, this is something that we wanted to do for launch, actually, uh, you know, with the thrall system. Uh, and it, I guess, uh, allows a different moral path, right, yeah. on how you uh, you have followers uh, and how you unlock that progression avenue. Yeah, which is good. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, uh, this is a low complexity version of a bigger system that we wanted to make, uh, potentially in the future at least, but we don't have any plans for it right now. Um, the Scepter revamp seemed like a good time for us to release a version of Saving Thralls instead of Enslaving Thralls as a special activity you could do in camps. Um, the more complex version will require some more whining and dining of the Thralls that you rescue. Um, but like I, like I said, we don't have any plan to do that specifically yet. I, I specifically do not have Corona, Mr. Fire originally. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that coming. We're gonna, we're gonna I, do, catch I do have a cough, camera. though. <laughs> I've actually... Uh, I, I, took a I too, have been tested for the Rona. Yeah. Oh, good. I, I took a sip of my water just a little bit ago, and I, it went down the wrong pipes. So I've been holding holding back a cough this entire time. <laughs> yeah. So if you see me if you see me struggling, or if you were seeing me struggling a little bit, it's because I was trying not to cough. I'm good now, though. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so that's good to hear about. So like uh, the new points of interest, uh, as well as like yeah, an alternative moral path for collecting followers. Yep. Um, hopefully, we see more in the future. Um, in addition to that, I think we're also doing a major revamp to vaults. Is that correct? Yeah, the vaults are being rebalanced to be level 60 content, mm -hmm. and they have new rewards uh, to match the new challenge. Basically, whenever we look at Exiled Lands and we look at Sipta and we say, what's the difference? Um, you know, there's there's a, a good bit more endgame stuff to do in Dungeons and Sipta, so, or uh, sorry, in Exiled Lands. So we decided to take the vaults and turn them into end game content, essentially. Um, we've also reduced the cooldown on vaults. So instead of being a half hour wait, they're now uh, eight to 12 minute wait. Mm -hmm. And we changed the way sigils work as well. Sigils are still rewarded by the vaults, but they no longer increase your damage against storm monsters. Instead, each sigil has a unique effect. And some, of, some examples are there are sigils that remove poison, bleed, or corruption. Uh, health restore when you kill things, extra mount endurance, extra resources when you harvest. Uh, one of them lets you climb even after you've run out of stamina. It'll mm, just drain your health. Awesome. Drain your health. And okay. one of them, oh. <laughs> yeah. And one of them will let you just sprint really far. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, they still function the same way too. You lose them on death. One of the new sigils also makes it so you only lose that sigil when you die. Awesome. Sweet. Good changes, yeah. Um, all right. So now moving moving on to the next bit. Uh, so yes, yeah, so we are bringing purges to Sipta. Pr uh, presently, or originally something that was absent from Sipta at launch, we're bringing <clears throat> purges to Sipta. Uh, can we go into details about you know what to expect, why we're doing it, what's going on with that? Yeah, we brought purges back because it was another thing that was missing from Sipta when you compare it to the Exiled Lands. Mm -hmm. um, they were missing because of lore. You know, we wanted to have this island that didn't have a bunch of humanoids on it. But when we added humanoids back, we decided, hey, let's bring purges back too. Mm -hmm. um, so purges will behave exactly like they do in the Exiled Lands. As you play and build, the purge meter will fill. And once you get to the end of the meter, you'll be attacked by themed monsters from the island. So wherever you build it, or wherever you build, uh, you'll be attacked by monsters from that area. I see a lot of people also saying they don't like the purge. I have excellent news for you. Uh, we've also updated the convergence trap. So the convergence trap no longer generates resources inside the storm. Instead, you can build it anywhere. And there are two recipes on the convergence trap. One lets you summon a purge for the cost of essences, the question mark item. And another one lets you clear your purge meter. So if you don't want to participate in the purge, you can just take some of the essences that you've collected incidentally while killing monsters on the island and wipe the purge out. Um, and just like 
the purge on Exiled Lands. The Sypta Purge will be a resource of high tier thralls. Mm -hmm. So if you want unique name thralls, this is one of the places to get them. And some of the monsters that we had in the storm will now spawn as a purge to attack your base. So Big Mushroom Man with his laser beam will show up if you build in the right place and come ravage your base. Gotcha. Or like, yeah, we have the big, uh, the big spiky demons kind of lumbering up to your base in our uh, in our visual aid as well. So some, so that's <laughs> something to expect. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. There's actually there's actually some uh, convergent trap footage being played right now as well. Yes. Yep. So yeah, and then that'll uh, for those of you who don't know, yeah, that's a it's a big obelisk that you can place down. It makes a very distinct sound and puts up a pillar of green light into the air, so it's pretty easily visible uh, when when that's up. Um, it's great. Thank you for that. Now let's see. The next thing is so we're we're making some really extensive changes to the surge. Uh, yeah. Yes. I can talk about the surge and the maelstrom as well right yes. now. Um, so the yeah. maelstrom, we completely soften it around the edges. Uh, previously, it had really overbearing sound effects and visual effects. You couldn't build inside whenever the surge was or whenever the maelstrom was active. So what we did was we we made those sound effects a lot more livable, toned down the visual effects, and made it so you can build inside the storm at any time. Oh, um, right. What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, right now, I'm playing a bit of the surges stuff. We have another video also specifically for being able to build in the tower. So I'm actually going to play that now, <clears throat> just to okay. go along with what you're saying. Sorry about that. <laughs> yep. No problem. Uh, we also made the storm occur a lot less frequently, so you'll see it somewhere around like 30 or 40 percent less than you would have previously, I mm -hmm. believe. A uh, big reason we changed this was just to open up the building space in the middle of the map. There were a lot of complaints about there not being enough areas to build. And we had this giant tornado taking up a third of the map mm -hmm. for like a third of the time you were playing the game. So now that there is less sand, less storm and the ability to build is re removed, uh, you can literally build in there anytime you want to. Enemies will no longer spawn to destroy your buildings inside the storm. And all of this behavior still exists as server settings. So if you want to play Sipta the way it was, you can still do that in single player or on a non-official server. You just have to turn the server settings back on. <laughs> hmm? Sorry, Scott's face, he, he, he's gone very 80s. I'm very pink right now. You are. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're like trying the, to fix that. Terminator the... going on. The vapor wave. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vapor wave. <laughs> and the one last thing I have to say about the storm, though, is that enemies will still ambush you when you spend time inside the storm, but they have been given new rewards. So there is a reason to kill those monsters still. Cool. Then we can cycle back to the surge if yes. you have the surge footage ready. Yes, I'll I'm playing it right now. There you go. So the surge works the same way that it always has, mm -hmm. but now it can be summoned any time if there's a free laser shrine to summon one too, even if there's a maelstrom present. The surge offers unique named thralls that you can't find anywhere else. So now we have the split between two sources to get unique thralls. You can do the surge with a with a high investment in essences and uh, swirling chaos, or you can do the purge, which will have its own thralls as well that you can't get from one another surge bosses are now the primary source of fragments of power uh the other source is rare camp bosses which are a you know a very small chance to spawn in one of the new camps that we've added to the map fragments of power can be used to unlock new recipes similar to the way they can be used in the library of esoteric artifacts in the exiled lands mm -hmm. um, we also made swirl and cut chaos cook a bit faster so it's faster to summon a surge now than it was previously. Great. And is there a, a, is there a reason why we're getting rid of the wild surges? Yeah, wild surges were an idea that we had that we thought would pad out the lack of NPC camps in the map. In the end, we decided it would be better to remove wild surges in favor of more camps mm -hmm. because they both take up real estate for players to build in. And just like a little fun inside look into development, I guess, there is a... Um, there's an issue, there was an issue on some servers where players would totally build around one of the wild surges and trap the thralls inside. And there was nothing preventing them from doing mm. that. So to combat that, I made a system that never saw the light of day <laughs> because <laughs> we decided to add it 
right before we decided to change the path for 2.3 to be this gigantic revamp instead of what we were planning to do before. And it was a system where wild surges would detect if they were surrounded by a building. And if there was a building around them and 90% of the pieces belong to the same guild, it would just nuke the entire building. Um, it, that was a complex version of a building blocker essentially. And it could pot potentially destroy an unexpecting player's base if they were new to SIPTA. So it was better to just use the tried and true static building blocker that everyone's familiar with. Yeah, because uh, yeah, I would probably feel bad if you're like new and not really familiar with why what's going on with the surges. So why can't I build around here? Why can't I build around exactly. here? Exactly. I just lose it. Or it lets you build a base there, and then a wild surge appears, and your entire base gets wiped out. You experience a huge loss, and then you don't want to play the game anymore. Right. Yeah. Feels yeah. bad. Yep. <laughs> so, so we don't want that to happen. Right. Yep. Player happiness at maximum. That's the, that's the main goal of this update. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and fun detected. <laughs> Most of the feedback was just, you know, the acquisition method that people had to to go to get thralls, right? Uh, it was a very large investment, uh, and it was something that they were missing from the exiled lands. So everything that we've changed is just to give more uh, opportunity and then to make the, the systems and what makes SIPTA special a little bit more accessible and not require nearly as much grind as it did before. Very good. So we... Going into now, let's see, we've talked about life near the tower, things going on around the tower, fragments of power. Now we're talking, now we can go inside the tower, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the big things everybody wanted whenever they first came to the island and they saw, hey, we put one giant building in the middle, was to just go inside that one building. And we didn't let them. <laughs> we, we actually didn't build anything inside the tower. So uh, what we decided to do for this patch was bring in one of the end game loops that everyone seems to really like from Exiled Lands is the Library of Esoteric Artifacts, where you go on adventure, you find fragments of power, bring them back to the library, and then you get really unique recipes that aren't like other things that you can craft. Um, so we decided to make the base of the tower essentially that same thing. This is now a library of SIPTA's, uh, of recipes for SIPTA, things that SIPTA has pulled through his portals, deconstructed and figured out how to make. And now you, for the low price of one fragment of power, can also learn how to make whatever it is he has a recipe for. Um, so you can enter the Void Forge at the base of the tower, just walk up the steps and, and use the door. Um, what a concept. And yeah, it's, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, if you don't like spoilers, you can cover your ears now. But some of the <laughs> stuff that'll be in the Void Forge are a new Dragon Bone armor sets. We have all, I think there are all variations of that, light, medium, and heavy. Uh, the two missing Silent Legion sets, a ton of placeables. Um, some of them are like uh, pots and dec like decorations and stuff we have on SIPTA. Some of it is like uh, ruined building pieces. Um, we've got new legendary weapons in there and, uh, the piece that there's songs, fast elevators. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody will like the fast elevators. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that's pretty much the biggest, uh, the biggest gain is we, we got a good place to put fast elevators. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, how fast? <laughs> how fast? Um, to the sky. Yeah, it's actually, I don't know the exact numbers, but I would venture to guess they're somewhere around 25 to 30% faster, if I were guessing. Yeah. It's it's significant. Good. <laughs> we need numbers. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, here are some of the, the newer armors. Yeah, there. yeah. So this is the Dragon Bone armor, and then this is the light Silent Legion set, and then upcoming is the medium one, uh, and then we'll be showing off some of the new weapons as well. Yeah. Uh, do we have a favorite? Uh, do we have a favorite weapon and/or armor that we're adding to two point three? And any insight on what went into making some of the new sets? Uh, I think the dragon bone armor looks really oh, it looks, good. It looks, <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, always a fan of the silent legion stuff. Yeah, the silent legion stuff is really good. Yeah. Um, favorite weapon. We we've done a lot with the legendary weapons. In the in. The void forge mm -hmm. so it's hard to pick out a specific one that's really 
the best. They're all a lot more unique than legendary weapons typically would be, though. I think we have some really rad, like, red crystal weapons that we're adding to that. Mm -hmm. but I don't think, I don't know if those are actually associated with the Void Forge, but I know that, yeah, that's the legendary hammer. I'm just showing the clip right now, yeah. And then I think we have, I think there should be some glimpses at big red crystals. Yeah. Yeah. Looks, yeah, there it is. I love it. Details on how to get them, maybe not disclosed yet. We'll let you figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> Yeah, the, the red crystal shield is actually pretty interesting. I believe that's the one that damages your attacker when you block. Oh, nice. Be able to do, finally do the classic porcupine build, hopefully. That's <laughs> yep. that's like one of my Thorns. favorite builds in like games that allow me to do it. I love that's porcupine great. builds, yeah. Thorns builds. Yep. All right, so in addition to... So yeah, talking about some fancy new weapons, I think mm -hmm. we also have some... Uh, it's more like a quality of life change, but I, uh, we're also adding sprint attacks to be able to uh, attack while sprinting. I know it's a... <laughs> Welcome to the future, y'all. But no, it's... Uh, uh, I, I know it's been something that's been like requested a whole bunch, so I think I'm hoping people will appreciate it. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to check it out on Test Live, uh, you just simply sprint and attack. And here's a glimpse at it. Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> it's very violent. Yeah, it's yeah, very violent. Cut right in half. <laughs> Rated M for mature. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, can you give us any insight on like uh, the addition of sprint attacks, uh, why it was important to add? Yeah, I mean, sprint attacks are something everyone just expects to be able to do, mm -hmm. right? Like when you're playing and you're chasing someone down or you're approaching a, an unsuspecting deer uh, that you, you want to annihilate and turn into leather, it's just an input you expect to be able to do. Right. Whether you've got a controller in your hands or controller in your hands or on your mouse and keyboard, you just want to run up and swing the weapon. So it just fulfills that natural expectation we all have, um, which is, you know, to be able to attack without coming to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. It should also be helpful in preventing long engagements in PvP because you can use the sprint attacks to actually pick people off and clip them as they're trying to run away from you. A lot of them have more forward momentum mm -hmm. than sprint speed, so it is possible to catch someone with it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you can see like it does, uh, I think yeah, each each and every weapon has its own sprint attack and yeah, it does have like, so it gives you like a lunge or like some extra forward momentum, yeah, so you don't get endlessly kited by people trying yeah, to run. I really crazy. like the hammer one. Yeah, yeah. The two-handed two yeah. hammer one looks so good. <laughs> yeah. I can do that. Yeah, just right. get a couple daggers yeah. and then I'll run away from you. <laughs> please don't, please don't do this and leave it to the professionals, don't do it at home. <laughs> um, so great, and then uh, kind of following up on that, uh, I think we also have like uh, other miscellaneous like quality of light changes uh, coming up. Also, is there anything that you wanted to go into about that? Yeah, a couple small things. Um, we took the oil recipe from Tier Four Thralls and just moved it to Tier Three Thralls because there is like a after we did the economy update, there is a very obvious lack of oil available. So I think by moving it to tier three th thralls, we'll we'll give away for people to actually generate as much oil as they need to be able to create armor and the like. Um, another thing is there are some new thrall specializations, uh, which are bonuses for armor, weapon, priest, and taskmaster thralls to be a little bit stronger. Nice. Cool. Very good. I think that about touches on that, the major. Yeah, that points. covers on all the major yeah. points that are coming up with the update. Um, that's a thank lot. you. Yeah, that's a lot. Thank you for that. Uh, yes. So just real yeah. quick, for I've seen some people asking about uh, for consoles the the parity patch that will happen. Uh, it won't have SIPTA, so it won't have any of the SIPTA things we talked about, but it will have any of the non SIPTA things. So sprint attacks would be an example. Those will be added to uh, consoles at the end of the month. Sweet. Great. Okay. Is there, and then is there anything else that we can go into before we go and jump into any like kind of Q&A? Or do you want to just take some questions that we collected from Reddit and the forums? Uh, I would love to get into the questions we collected. I, I have a lot to talk about <laughs> uh, as a result of those questions. And a lot of it is uh, even in 2.4, like we have a lot to talk about that I think a lot of like players that are pvp oriented will like to hear about 2.4 things like that okay yeah let's just jump into that then yep so these are all questions that we posted on the forums and reddit um we took 
questions that you all asked, and we'll get through as many as we can. Um, like a, you know, we said earlier, there's community support in chat, so if we didn't get to any um, of these questions, um, feel free to ask in chat, and they will try to answer as many as they can. Um, but yeah, so uh, one of the first questions was asking about the purge and about improvements to it for the future, um, and like any for the exiled lands, uh, you know, how improvements made to, to that purge, and um, and yeah, what you got to say about that? Yeah, so when we talk about the purge and making improvements to that, it's the same system no matter which map you're on. So if we make improvements for SIPTA, those same improvements will be inherited by the mm. exiled lands or any modded map that has the purge on it as well. Um, right now, we have one major change that's coming. Unfortunately, it's not a 2.3 change. It is a 2.4 change, but it will change the way the purge targets your base and make it much more successful at attacking from the outside. So yeah, when, when you've got those purges that teleport on your roof, you know, yeah. we hope to avoid more <laughs> cases like that and have them actually attack where they're supposed to. Great. So improvement is coming. Yeah. Um, okay. Someone yeah. else. Oh, sorry. Go and, ahead. and there are improvements in 2.3. So it, it's not like we just right. turned it on and left it exactly how it is in the excellent <laughs> lands right now. So yeah. you will notice that it, it behaves better, but there still is that uh, annoying bug where things will happen inside your base. Um, yeah. It'll be fixed in 2.4. Right. Excellent. Yay. It'll be improved in 2.4. <laughs> okay. <Right. laughs> Promise the moon. Great. Um, someone else had worked, uh, someone else had asked, so working remotely for a gaming company in the midst of a pandemic must be challenging. Um, has there been any positive takeaway or valuable things we have learned from the experience of working through COVID over the last year? Yeah, I mean, Scott, I'll give you a chance to answer this too if you want. One of the biggest okay. things for me is it just taught me how much I appreciated being in the office and how much I like not being stuck in my house every single day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, it's it's also given our team the chance to just step up and, and show that they can still be responsible and, and productive without someone peering over their shoulder. You know, we, we've had to learn a lot about the way about changing the way we communicate and trying to keep everybody on the same page. And I feel like we've done a really good job of it. Yeah, I, I think the team's done a really good job. Uh Obviously, it makes some things a lot harder, like a dev stream, for example. It would right. be much nicer if we were all in the same room yeah. uh, and we could just have casual cues who to switch to. But now this is more like a Zoom call or a Slack mm -hmm. call. Uh, you also miss information a lot, which is unfortunate. You know, uh, when you're in the office, you hear conversations. Uh, you can you can get a little bit more of the intent behind things because you know people are talking about why they're changing things, uh, and you just pick up on that. Uh, so it it requires a lot more of both giving information and and pulling information from people. So uh, mm. it's crazy that it's it's only been a year. I think actually today is like the year anniversary for. Yeah, it. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah. Wow. The twelfth is when we went to work from home at the yeah. U.S. office at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. All right. Um, so another question is, are there any plans to change how Exile Lands recipes are obtained on the Isle of Septa, or will it be mostly through random drops uh, from vault chests and NPCs? We don't have any plans to change that at a fundamental level or anything like that. If there are cases where there are specific recipes or something that are missing that maybe we missed when we made a new map, uh, you know, we'd be happy to take a look. But we are at a point where I can say that we're going to be adding a system to transfer characters between servers. And this will let you move from a SIPTA server to an Exiled Land server or vice versa. And being able to transfer will let go to those different maps for unlocks that you can't get in other maps. Mm. Will not be in so we actually, now. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, right now, we're, we're, we're hoping that'll ship with 2.4. I believe that's, that's the goal. Um, but we are keeping maps a little bit different on purpose because we know this feature is coming. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's gonna, that's pretty big news for a lot of folks, and I think it's been oft requested yeah. as well. Yeah. So that's really good news. Um, all right, and there was another question regarding some specific items. Uh, so someone was asking, will we ever get to pick uh, the gray flower lupine, mine obsidian, obtain sand beast bile glands, or brew the potion of bestial memory on the Isle of Sipta? You guys have been told or or hinted at that we are adding a lot more <laughs> land mass in in two point four. And we do plan to add Grayflower, Lupine, Obsidian, and Sandbeast Bio Glands in 2.4. The, 
the potion of bestial memory is a drop from alpha creatures on the island already. So if you find like an alpha rock nose or or something like that, you can you can kill it and get that potion. Uh, but like I mentioned before, we are keeping the maps different on purpose. And this is one of those things that if you want to learn how to craft it, we expect you to do it in Exile Lands and then bring it to other maps. Mm. Uh, okay. Will the follower cap ever be activated on official servers? Yes. Uh, it will probably be in 2.4. So we'll explain all the changes that we're going to do for it for 2.4, give the exact amounts, uh, and then give people plenty of heads up before it actually gets released. Yeah, but so that y'all can it is, accordingly. It is one of the the performance issues that uh, servers have, right? If there's if there's 9,000 thralls in addition to the 7,500 NPCs on the server, that's uh, it's quite taxing. So we had to we had to put some restrictions on the official servers. Uh, it will be optional, just yeah, so private servers don't need to use it if they don't need want to. Hmm. Great. Okay. Um, do you plan to add more vanilla buildings on Sipta and maybe somewhere you can build inside or on it? Yeah, with this question, I wasn't totally sure exactly what they meant by vanilla buildings. I think they just but... mean like world buildings. Yeah, that was that was my assumption. Um, there are some small camps and structures that aren't blocked in 2.4 for sure. I'll have to check to see if there is anything in 2.3 that's really notable. But we did add things in 2.4 that we intended to make them a camp. Then we decided to not place a camp there, but we decided mm -hmm. to leave the structures behind. So those are things that you can build on. Yeah, and in 2.4, which we'll talk about uh, probably more end of this month, beginning of next month, uh, you'll you'll be able to see it. Uh, we, we've made some specific areas that are really nice for building. So uh, I think people will be pretty happy with that. Sweet. Hmm. Um, OK, another question is, will we get in prison thralls and buried treasures for the exiled lands? We don't have plans to do that now. It's another part of the difference between Sipta and Exiled Lands that just adds a little bit more flavor to, to Sipta versus Exiled Lands. Um, I did mention earlier that we have had intents to do a more elaborate thrall rescue system, and that one you would expect to see on any map if we wind up doing that. Yeah. If people really like the feature uh, and they want it on Exiled Lands, definitely speak up and we can, yep. we can see what we can do. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Um, let's see here. <coughs> uh, have you ever considered a TLC update for non-human creatures? So uh, makeover for hyenas and wolves or just general rework of the AI? Yeah, um, we're actually doing pretty big updates for rock noses and spiders in 2.4. And uh, we plan to keep doing monster updates over time. So we, we decided to do those ones first. And then next we'll pick, we'll probably do something like wolves or hyenas next um and just keep iterating on what's already there to make everything a little better all righty let's see next question is so so uh some we have some questions about named artisans if there's any updates to that um since sipta got its own purges will we somehow be rewarded for getting rare thralls yeah so right now the reward really is the power of the thrall because they they do increase in bonus like as you get an, a, a tier four artisan like a named artisan you will get a higher bonus than just a standard tier four thrall um i think that what this is probably referencing to referencing is the way we used to have a lot more unique recipes on thralls and we don't have any plans right now to add more hard requirements on finding specific thralls uh, we moved a little bit away from that on purpose to make it the thrall system a little bit more accessible Someone had asked about Elder Things as trophies. Um, will that be possible? Uh, it is possible. We're not actually making them right now, but it is a thing that we can consider making, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we want an avatar of Bogruk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make it huge. Uh, OK, uh, any plans of adding fast travel on the Isle of Sipta? Uh, that's still to be determined. Uh, I've actually started exploring that this week after having looked at how much land mass we're adding in 2.4, it might be a good time to add a fast travel system. And we may add a fast travel system that can be used regardless of what map you're on as well. Uh, yeah. We don't want to invalidate the map room, but 
it would be nice to give explorers more ability to explore. Mm -hmm. So we need to see how people play test when we add the the new lands. Uh, and yeah, it, if it takes forever to get areas, like Dennis was saying, we'll evaluate that and add a, a method to help out. Awesome. Excellent. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We have a couple more questions. Um, let's see. Are you happy with the changes you have done to rock noses and elephants? Um, are they where developers would like them to be? Yeah, we can always have a look at monsters that, that people have uh, issues with. Like we can take a look at elephants and rock noses and do a balance pass on them. Um, in 2.4, I mentioned there's also a rework of rock noses coming. So you'll find that we're never really truly happy. There's always, it's like art, you know, we always can iterate upon it. It, it could never be done. Um, but elephants and rock gnosis both have a lot of armor and elephants have very high HP as well. So we can do a balance pass to see if we still feel those numbers are sane. But in the case of heavily armored creatures, I would personally just adapt my inventory and my play style a little bit and take things like a hammer and oil and, and you know, really buff up my armor pen because though that's basically purpose built to kill things with high armor. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Let's see. Um, this is a good question. Any plans to revert the iframes on light armor to their previous values? Yeah. So I think this is one. Everyone that's been clamoring about PvP in chat, right. uh, pay close attention. <laughs> um, we don't have a plan to do a full reversion on those values, but in two point four, we are planning on making changes. And I'll, I'll say this too, this caveat, this obviously is 2.4. It's not even on test live yet. So whenever it goes to test live, this will be included in the patch notes and everybody that has a vested interest should come give us your feedback so we can make changes to make sure we get it right the first time. Yeah, and there's there's other PVP changes in 2.4 also. I don't know if you wanted to Definitely. give any sneak previews, Dennis. I, I absolutely will. Let so me get people stop saying the same first. thing on the chat <laughs> okay, over yeah. and over and over again. <laughs> sure. So the first thing I'll say is uh, we're nerfing horses. <laughs> so you will never, you will no longer do two times damage with a spear on horseback that applies a bleed. Uh, horses, yeah. Everything across the board with horses, it will not be the way to play anymore. <laughs> it will be an option, but it will not be a requirement. Um, coming back to dodge which i think is also a really big topic like i said we're not going to nerf the iframes but what we are going to do is make changes to the iframe window and make it so dodges scale with your encumbrance instead of your armor type so instead of scaling your dodge with your armor class we want you to be able to spec into an attribute and wear gear that enables different builds for different armor types instead of always having the best dodge and light armor so the dodge window is changing. Currently it's 0.4 seconds of invulnerability and it's, go down, it's going to go down to 0.35, no matter what. Uh, the distance of the dodge was 3.7 meters before. It's going to be 4.4 meters now, again, no matter what. Encumbrance will dictate your roll speed and your recovery speed out of the roll. So the more encumbered you are, the slower you roll and the, and the slower you recover. Uh, but recovery is still modified by agility. Mm. So and on top of that, the base recovery speed was increased by 30% as well. So dodge will become a big time comeback mechanic again. And I expect that with these changes, a skilled player will be able to take out multiple players instead of being completely mobbed just by the number of players they're facing. Great. Chat seems to be very, very happy about Yeah, the... they're, they're pretty <laughs> pumped about the horse stuff yeah. Yeah, and PvP changes. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. There was there was actually something that got brought up in chat. I don't know. I don't know if I caught an answer in chat, but someone had asked that there are going to be a bunch of changes to RAM consumption on console, uh, to, just to confirm that PC will also be receiving those improvements as well. Yeah. So obviously, our our target with any optimization right now is to get the the consoles uh, performing the same as each other, and eventually PC. Uh, but Every optimization that we make outside of something very specific, like the the, the dashboarding crash on Xbox, was due to uh, Xbox a, a library we did for voice chat. Right, uh, everything else will be for every single platform, whether it be you know PS4 or Xbox or Steam. Okay, sweet, excellent. 
And then uh, one other one other hot topic that I see a lot in like comments and also in Twitch chat right yeah. now is the topic of porking. <laughs> <laughs> what? So pork porking your thralls? Oh, oh god. <laughs> no, okay, not like that. I mean, <laughs> maybe not a mod. Maybe it was a mod on PC, but I mean, I mean. <laughs> Andy. Well, this has gone down. It's good to be back, baby. <laughs> Um, is that something we can comment on in terms of like I think it's a it's it's some like thing that's used to uh, like beef up your like roid out your thralls like crazy by feeding them like <clears throat> pork and stuff. Yeah, sure. I mean any 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 exploits we would like to address, absolutely. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I also saw this uh, mentioned in chat a couple of times, but uh, about plans on th or thoughts on how we're improving food and drink and all of that. Yeah, so we've we've talked internally about changing food and drink systems. Um, right now, we're talking about making hydration and starving a little bit more forgiving. So whenever you start playing the game, it might not cause you to just rage quit because you couldn't find any insects to eat or something like that. Mm -hmm. But as far as the larger system, we don't have any plans to any specific plans yet to really change the way it works. Um, we would like to make it a more involved system, but. I, I definitely can say that it'll never go back to the way food and drink worked before. Um, the healing changes are, the mechanics of them are, are essentially here to stay, but we can always make tweaks to healing to make it a little bit better. Like uh, one thing we've talked about is making healing, the healing potion animation faster. Uh, that might be another thing that happens in 2.4. It's just to give you more opportunity to actually heal after you've dodged and gotten away from someone or a monster or something like that. Okay. Yeah, we we don't want to go back to spamming <clears throat> eating food while in the middle of a massive melee. Uh, we would yep. we would rather do other things to improve healing. But if anybody has any feedback on the the system uh, after we've made the changes in, I think it's in two four. Uh, let us know, yes. and we can we we will continue to look into it and improve it. Excellent, cool. Right. And then uh, one last thing, also just to kind of reiterate. Also, I, I know there was a concern about like planning to wipe the maps. Uh, believe the answer is nope. no yeah we said we wouldn't wipe it remains yeah, true. Un yeah unfortunately we do have to nuke some buildings we are very sorry about that uh we we tried to put the the new camps in places that either had a building blocker already or uh that our data showed people didn't build there a lot so uh and then we use test live also to to run it past some people uh and and they told us a couple locations that we should move. I think we did end up moving one camp, maybe. Uh, I can't remember if, if we actually did, Dennis. We left it. <laughs> oh, we left it. Well, yeah. we ignored yeah. your feedback. No. <laughs> oh, no. One specific camp was brought up on Test Live, and it was a very subjective, this is a bad place to put a camp. It, it wasn't by large, definitely everyone will build here. Uh, I, I believe we kept that one in place. Uh, but yeah, we we did use data to to look at where it would cause the least amount of damage. So uh, yeah. sorry, we're if we impact your base, we we've been running the event for quite a while for double crafting. I think that's still going, uh, and it will continue yeah. or harvesting, right? Uh, and yeah. that'll keep on going for quite a while. I think one more week after we patch. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, the point of that event was essentially to pad the blow for anyone that needs to move their base. It'll be easier to tear it down and rebuild it somewhere else. So use that map. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I think that about covers as much as we can. We're we are a little. We actually ran a little bit over the uh, the intended time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we're about out of time for. Some somebody was asking about undermeshing. I want to talk oh, about yeah, that. Yeah, go for it, please. Yeah. Please, yes. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we're continuing to improve the system on exiled lands. Uh, we will be turning it on on SIPTA on official launch, soon after official launch. Uh, the, the reason we don't have it on right now is that since we're making all the changes in development to add the, the new areas, uh, we're not confident turning it on yet. So shortly post-release, uh, the Undermesh system will get uh, turned on on SIPTA. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks for that, Scott. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jeremy Day has been asking about the Convergence Trap in Exiled Lands, too. Mm. Uh, we've made the Convergence Trap just in SIPTA for now, but it's another case where, like the, the Thrall Rescue System, we want to hear how you guys feel about it, and if everyone seems to like it and agree that it's just a bit of an addition to the game, then we'll put it in Exiled Lands 
or make a system or changes to the existing system so you could build it regardless of what map you're on. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. Any any final remarks? Anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, I would like to thank everybody that's played Sipta and given us so much feedback. Uh, we when we originally launched it, uh, I think I came out and I said we were uncertain on a couple of the mechanics and and how it would work, and that's why we used the early access period or we went into early access uh, was to to gather feedback. So. Uh, I want people to know, even though I just shouted, we ignored your feedback, you know, like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. Uh, we have been listening to your feedback and we really appreciate it. And we really appreciate uh, everybody that's been with us through the early access mm -hmm. period. Uh, we, we want to hear what you think of 2.3. It'll be on Steam on Tuesday, uh, in, unless something critical comes up this weekend. Uh, but seems like it's going to be on yeah. Tuesday uh, and then consoles soon after that. Uh, not not the end of this month, but basically it'll hit consoles when we officially launch and when we leave early access. So uh, not too far out. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And we'll have all the latest news and announcements and all of that on our Twitter and Facebook. So make sure you're following at least one of those if you want to keep up to date. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Well, great. Right. Yeah. Scott, Dennis, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, appreciate it. Taking your time. Special thanks also to Marcin for joining us uh, earlier, talking about the technical aspects. Thank you for watching. Um, I think that about wraps it up for, for today's stream. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, yeah. Looking forward to the launch of 2.3 on Steam Tuesday. Um, anything else you wanted to add? Anything? No, this video will be up later, yep. um, as well as a write-up. So if you missed any of this, you know we'll have it out as soon as possible. But yeah. All righty. Hope everybody has an excellent Friday and weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Come test on Tesla. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.